Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's tutorial we're going to be taking a look at how we can use a free plugin to move our website from one domain to another or from one server to another. This is a great technique if you're working on developing a website on a temporary domain and then when you're ready to go live you want to move it over with the minimal fuss. So we're going to take a look at this free plugin, I'm going to take you step by step through the entire process and at the end of it we'll have a duplicate of our website ready to go live. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. So I've got the WordPress administration open and I'm on the add plugin page ready to add this new plugin. So what I'm going to do is go to search plugins and I'm going to look for duplicator, which is the free plugin that we're going to use for this process. So we'll search for that. And there we go. So it's the first option and it's by life in the grid. So we're just going to install that like we would any other plugin in WordPress. So we'll let that go through the entire routine, install everything, download it to the entire process, ready for us to start working. And there we are, we're ready now, we can activate this plugin. So let's do that. And once we've done that, we can go through to the settings and we can start working. So you can see we've now got a new entry on the left hand side and we've got duplicator. So you can see we've got a couple of options and what we want to do is just go through to packages and we're going to create our downloadable package ready to duplicate our website. Now what this does is it takes a backup of our entire website structure, creates an SQL file that allows us to convert or change the relevant links throughout the entire site for the new domain to take care of all that within the database. And it creates an installer PHP file that we can use to actually install the uh, website duplicate on our new server. So let's create a new package. This gives us a couple of options. We can give it a name. We can go through, we can take a look at the storage archive information and the installer itself. Now all we really need to do and all you should need to do for most things in this case is come down to the installer section and we're going to fill in the relevant information for our specific uh, new server. Now normally your host is going to be localhost, the host port will need to be filled out uh, automatically for you and all you need to do is make sure that you created a new database and a new user on your new server and have that information to hand. If you haven't done that I recommend doing that first and then come back and actually put this information in. So you can see you've got a couple of other options below, which normally you don't really need to worry about, but if they apply to you, you can go through and click on those to make them active. The one thing we do need to do is input the new URL information. So this is what our new server is going to be, or our new domain is going to be. So not the temporary domain we've developed it on, the new domain. And I would recommend, even if all you're doing is moving your site from one location to another on servers, I would still recommend putting the, the URL in there, even if it might be the same URL as you're currently using, just for moving purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill out the relevant information for mine. Now, at the moment, I'm using this on a development server on my local machine, so it's not actually on a live server. So I'm going to fill out the relevant information, and then we're going to click to go to the next stage. So in this example, I've just got my database name in, I've got my username in, and I've got my new URL. I'm not using SSL, I don't need to worry about that. I'm not dealing with anything to do with caching, I've got no caching plugins on this, I'm going to leave everything unchecked, same with the filters in the database and so on, all this information could be left unchecked. I've got everything that I need set up, so I can now go to the next stage and we'll move on to, the, to part two. So once we click next, it's going to go through and scan the site and come up with any error messages that it might find. So we'll let that run through the process, and once it's finished, we'll take a look at that. So you can see it tells us any problems we may have on there. So you can see we've got an error with the total size, and we've got large files. Now normally this is kind of thing like where you've got uh, commercial plugins uh, that are part of a theme package. When you upload the theme, they'll tend to be including those installers, which could be quite large. Normally you, you don't have to worry too much about this, but it's still worth checking to have a look what the error messages are and what information they've given us and then you can take that into account when you're doing things so you can see we've got a few different bits and pieces but i should be good to go on that i'll check the box that says i'm happy to shoot and shoot to continue so we'll do that and we'll click on build if you've got any change you want to make there you can then rescan it and come back and check to see if those warnings are gone so we hit build we're ready to move on to the next stage That'll probably tell us it's building our package. That's going through into all the things it needs to do to create the archive and to create the installer with the information we've given it. 
And once that's completed, we're then ready to move on to download the files, upload them to our new server and run the installer so we can get everything up and running. So I'll pause the video while this is going through and once that's finished, we'll take a look at the next stage. And there we go, it's created the installer and the archive. It's given us some information about the size of the archive. And you can see we can click on either of these now to download those to our machine, or we can click on all packages to go to a different page. So let's just click installer. We'll download that, we'll click the archive and let that download through to our, our computer. Once we're done, we're ready to move on now, upload these files and we'll take a look at how we can install it. So let's move on to that stage. Okay, so at this point now, you, once you've downloaded those files, you're going to need to use an FTP program, something like Qt FTP or FileZilla or something like that, to upload your files to your new server location. Once that's been done, then we can move on to the next stage. Now, like I say, at this point in time, I'm just using a local server, so I don't need to FTP this. It's all done on my home computer. So it's going to be slightly different, but as long as you realize that you just need to upload these two files to your the root, the home directory on your server, online then you're good to go with the next stage so i've uploaded mine i'm ready to go so i can switch over to my new site which in this instance is like i say a local site so i'll just refresh that and you can see we now have the installer php file and we have the archive file of the entire website already done so i'll click the installer and that should take us through then to the the installation process on our now new server ready to start filling out the rest of the information to create create our duplicate website on our new domain so once we hit install, you can see it brings us to the duplicator installer. You can see we've got the option to create a new database or to connect and remove all data. Well, we've already created a database. We've given the information in the, in the first stage of the actual creating a duplicate. So I can say connect to the and remove all data. You can see it's taken the information over that I created earlier. All I need to do now is to put my relevant password in there and I can just check that, test my connection, and provide everything is okay, it'll go on to the next stage. So you can see, I've hit test connection, it's telling me that the server's connected, the database is found, everything is good to go, I'm now ready to move on. You can see we've also got an option underneath before we move on to the next stage, which is advanced options. And if we expand that, you can see we've got some more options available to us manual package extraction and so on. In 99% of cases, you should not need to do any of this. So I'm going to leave that out because the reality is you shouldn't have that to deal with when you are moving your site over unless you've got any specific sort of setup configuration that may need this to be updated. So let's say run deployment, providing everything is okay, that's going to go through and do what it needs to do behind the scenes, update the database information with the new URLs, etc., and then give us the next and final stage, which where we can test things and we can delete the installation uh, files. So we'll run deployment and we'll move on to the next stage. Okay, so the installer now is going through, doing what it needs to do, processing the files in the database. We just now need to wait until this is finished. And what I'll do is I'll pause the video until we go through and this is this stage is completed. And there we go. Everything is done. You can see that the old settings, it tells us what the information is there. Like I say, this is currently on my local machine, but obviously you'd have the temporary domain that you were using. It then tells us the new settings. And if we want to make any tweaks to any of this, we can do at this point. If we want to create a new admin account, we can do that from this point as well. And if we go to advanced options, you can see we've got a whole range of different things we can do on there. And much the same as in the first stage, unless you have to make these changes, chances are everything is going to be set up in exactly the way you want to because you're just taking a duplicate. But again, those options are there should you need them. So let's run the update. I'll just close all these down. Run the update. That'll go through to the final stage where we can go through and test. So there we go. Everything is now completed. So we've got four stages we can do. We can review the install report. You can see it says there are no errors in deployment or updates or warnings. So well, we can view it, but the reality is there's nothing to really see there. So next we've got save permalinks, which you can go through and ensure that all of your link structure is going to be intact. So even if you make no changes to this, it's still worthwhile going to the permalink section, hitting the update or save to make sure that it's set up the way you want. Then I'll make sure that everything works the way you, you want it to. Thirdly, we need to go and test the site just to make sure that all the images and everything are displaying as they should do. And then finally, we've got the security cleanup, which means that it'll remove the installation files. Now, you may have to do some of this manually, but you need to be logged into the admin of your new WordPress site anyway. But if you go into the FTP, just make sure that the 
the archive that you originally had is deleted and the installer file is deleted at the very minimum. You don't want a copy on there that people can access and get information about your database strings and things like that. So make sure those are taken out. So let's click on save permalinks. That'll take us over so we can log into the admin with our original uh, login details. So we'll jump over to that. Now, if you're already logged in, it'll take you straight through, but it should come up and say, please input your information. So we'll say, yep, that's fine. Now, I'm not bothered with the fact that I'm using admin, but from a security point of view, that's the last thing you want to be using. And if you want to take a look at ensuring your security is pretty good on your WordPress site, then check out my Avoid Your Site Getting Hacked video tutorial on the WP Tuts Facebook page and website. So let's just log in and we can go make sure that our permanent structure is exactly as we want it to be. So that'll take us through into the permanent section and you can see at the top it's given us a warning saying that the uh, the the, the duplicator files are still on the server, so we need to remove those because they pose a security risk. So we can say, well, yeah, we're okay with the uh, permanent structure. We'll hit save changes to make sure that that's updated anything in the HT access file. And then what we can do is we can go to the cleanup page or we can jump back out to the duplicator installer and, uh, and do the same thing from there. So what we'll say is we want to delete reserved files. So that'll go through and delete those relevant files off our server. Uh, you, you can use these two, but the reality is they're from legacy versions of the software. Now, like I say, this doesn't always remove the installer PHP file or the archive file. So what I'd recommend is take a look. Like I said, this is my local machine, but you can see that the archive is still there. So take a look via your FTP program. Make sure you delete that file. It's going to take up a chunk of space anyway, but you don't want it to pose security risks. And just ensure that everything else that shouldn't be in there, such as the installer.php file, are deleted. Providing they are, then you're good to go. So once we've done that, we are just at the point where we need to go and check that the site works exactly as expected to. But what we've done is we've gone through step by step. We've duplicated the site, duplicated the database, moved it over to a different domain, uploaded it, recreated the site, created all the new database structure to ensure that all the links and everything else are using the new URL or URLs. And we've done that quickly and easily. This is the kind of thing that 10 minutes and you should be done, which really is a lot quicker and easier than trying to do it manually. So let's just quickly check the site to make sure that everything is as we expect it to be. And as we are, then we're done. So there we go. There's the site. Everything laid out as it should be. All my links are in the right place. All my links are set up correctly. Everything works the way you expect it to, which is quick and easy. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button. Remember, we release new videos every Wednesday. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we've covered on this channel or website, please pop those in the comment section below. We try to read everything you post up on there and we try to answer everything that you put up as well. So until next time, take care.